All right, folks, today I want to talk to you about something that, that is a very important part of reading. It's something we need to be very much aware of and pay close attention to as we read, and it is word choice. Authors don't just choose words randomly or carelessly when they write a story. They're very intentional and very purposeful, and they think to themselves about what are the words that are going to help my readers to really understand this story and to feel like they're in it and even picture it like a movie inside their head. So today I have three words I'm going to show to you, and I want you to look for them as I read this text and notice why did the author use that particular word instead of the different one. The first word is fantastic. What's this word? Fantastic. Probably you've heard this one a lot and you're very familiar with it. Fantastic means something is extremely good. Our next word is captured. What's the word? Captured. Captured means caught or taken prisoner. We'll think about why the author chose this particular word. And finally, our word is growled. What's the word? Growled. We'll see why the author chose to use this particular word. Growled, captured, and fantastic. Be looking for these three words as we read the story today. Our story we're going to read is called How I Spent My Summer Vacation, and it's written by Mark Teague. And one thing I want you to know about Mark Teague is Mark Teague is a fantastic writer and illustrator. And later on this week, you're going to get the chance to read a biography about him. Mark Teague chooses his words and his pictures very carefully and makes them fit together. So as I'm reading, you're looking for the words fantastic, captured, and growled. And when we find them, we'll stop and talk about why the author chose these words. How I spent my summer vacation. How I spent my summer vacation by Wallace Bleff. You notice he's writing on a blackboard with a piece of chalk. We can tell he's in a classroom. It's the month of September. And apparently, because he has papers in his hand, he's getting ready to read a report about his summer vacation. Let's see how it went. When summer began, I headed out west. My parents had told me I needed a rest. Your imagination, they said, is getting too wild. It'll do you some good to relax for a while. And I notice how Mark Teague lets us see, it's almost like it's a movie that's taking place, and we see the train coming into view. So they put me aboard a westbound train. To visit Aunt Fern in her house on the plains. So you notice on this page, how we see the train coming into view. The teacher here doesn't seem to be paying any attention. She's grading papers. And here, he's left the classroom and he's back out west. But I was captured by cowboys, a wild-looking crowd. Their manners were rough and their voices were loud. Notice how the picture fits really well with the word that he chose to use, captured. You can see he's been caught around the waist, like these cowboys were galloping by and they reached down and swooped him up and he's been taken prisoner or captured by them. I'm trying to get to my aunt's house, I said, but they carried me off to their cow camp instead. The cattle boss growled as he told me to sit. We need a new cowboy. Our old cowboy quit. We could sure use your help. So what do you say? I thought for a minute and then I told him, okay. Notice how Mark Teague used the word growled. He didn't say the cattle boss said or the cattle boss spoke to me. He gave us the word growled to let us think about a rough sounding voice. Then I wrote to Aunt Fern so she'd know where I'd gone. I said not to worry, I wouldn't be long. Dear Aunt, captured by cowboys, don't worry, see you soon. Love, Wallace. Wallace doesn't sound scared or upset, does he? That night, I was given a new set of clothes. 
Soon I looked like a wrangler from my head to my toes. But there's more to a cowboy than boots and a hat. I found out the next day and the day after that. Every day I discovered some new cowboy tricks from roping. He's caught the bull by the horns, hasn't he? And look at the expression on his face. He looks a little scared, doesn't he? And riding to making fire with sticks. He doesn't seem scared in most of this story, but it does sound like he's working hard and learning lots of important skills. Slowly the word spread all over the land. That Wrangler kid Bleff is a first-rate cowhand. Look how he is riding and holding the reins in his teeth. Maybe you've been to a rodeo and you've seen trick riding. It sounds like he's gotten very good at riding. The day finally came when the roundup was through. Aunt Fern called, Come on over! Bring your cowboys with you! She was cooking up a barbecue that very same day, so we cleaned up a little and we headed her way. I think this picture is a funny picture because they're out in the middle of the desert and they found a phone booth there. Wow. The food was delicious. There was plenty to eat. And the band that was playing just couldn't be beat. But suddenly, I noticed a terrible sight. The cattle were steering and stamping with fright. It's a scene I'll remember till my very last day. They're gonna stampede! I heard somebody say. Just then they came charging. They charged straight at me. I looked for a hiding place, a rock, or a tree. What I found was a tablecloth spread out on the ground. So I turned like a matador and spun it around. It was a new kind of cowboying, a fantastic display. The cattle were frightened and stampeded away. I think this picture is funny because it shows all the other cowboys hiding behind this tree. And here's old Wallace Bleth stopping the stampede with a tablecloth. The cowboys all cheered. Bleff's a true buckaroo. They shook my hand and slapped my back, and Aunt Fern hugged me too. And that's how I spent my summer vacation. Now look at this picture. The teacher has started looking over him like, what? And what is she, what do you think she's thinking? I don't think she believes his story, do you? I can hardly wait for show and tell. Do you think she believes him now? I think so as well. We noticed that the author, Mark Teague, was very purposeful with the words he chose. He used the word captured to give us the idea that uh, Wallace was taken prisoner. He used the word growled to give us the idea about the cattle boss speaking in a rough kind of voice. And he used the word fantastic when Wallace said it was a fantastic display when he used the cape, the tablecloth like a matador. So I hope that you enjoyed that story. And I hope you also noticed how word choice really helped us to, to have a better picture of what was happening because our author was very careful with the words he chose. And that made the story more interesting, more entertaining, and gave a really more full picture in our minds as we read the story. Thanks, folks. Bye.